church anniversary at KMC Nutsford Methodist Church. After our worship this morning we're going to meet in the virtual KMC coffee lounge and then on Tuesday evenings we have our new Bible study Hope in the Main Street, a Kingdom Community. So I hope that you'll be able to share with us on those occasions too. It is also VE weekend and so we're going to begin with a town crier chant which should have been read all around the nation. I'm not sure that it will be of course with the lockdown but I thought we'd use it this morning as a call to worship. Members of KMC, Nutsford Methodist Church and all sharing worship today. This is your church anniversary. Citizens one and all please join this cry for peace that you now hear from me Remember men and women, old and young, who died to make us free. The women left at home did not just sit and wait. They toiled in harsh conditions before dawn till very late. Factories, farms, other essential jobs, the women were quick at learning. They worked, some died, to keep the home fires burning. As we remember this special day, do not forget that every day, someone needs your aid. Do not put away your poppies, letting your memories fade. Celebrate with the knowledge that VE Day is also a time to remember beyond the solemn wreaths of the 11th of November. Let's thank all of those who have gone before with their colours proudly unfurled. Join us as united we say, peace to the world. God save the Queen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you on this day for your faithfulness, your love and for your church. We pray that as we share in worship, we might know your word for us and the presence and power of your Holy Spirit. So we pray, come Holy Spirit, come. Come Holy Spirit, come. Amen. On this, our church anniversary, we find ourselves cut off from each other in lockdown, but we can still meet each other on the internet. I would like to thank all the KMC members over the years who have shown love and fellowship to Dorothy and myself. About 77 years ago, I was christened at KMC. I went to Sunday school, as it was then called, uh, youth club and uh, <coughs> circuit youth weekends together with friends Anne and Keith Moss and Eileen Podmore and her late husband John. We had great fun and we still meet on Sunday evenings. I remember many people over the years including Rini Fox, Rosemary Hall and Kathleen Colbeck, who played a great part in my spiritual life. KMC has always been an outreach church, sending people out to be ministers and to spread the gospel to others. I remember Christmas Day service on BBC TV in 1978 and the impact it, it had nationally. Many members will remember it and will still talk about it today. The minister, Derek Davison, who led the live service, celebrated his 90th birthday yesterday. The church is now using social media to, to, to be in contact with people. It's a great challenge for the future and we mustn't miss this opportunity to reach more people. Thank you for being KMC, where we both belong. And we send our love and wish God's blessing on you all. Blessed be your name, the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed
Lucy and uh, it's great to be able to send you this greeting on your church anniversary. I'm Alan and I'm Carol and we give thanks to God on this weekend for all that God has done over the years through his church in Nutsford and we look forward to the time when we'll be spending some time with you and being part of the future that he has for Nutsford. This is a strange time and we're praying for you as we get ready to move this summer and to join with you in September. It is a real privilege to be able to be your minister and we're really looking forward together to sharing that journey as God leads us ever onwards and as Christ longs to build his church. So bless you all and we'll see you soon. Take care. Hi everyone, Hi everyone at KMC. KMC. At, At this, this different and difficult time, we send greetings from the North East. We feel blessed to be part of God's Church wherever we are. Happy Anniversary! Hello everyone at KMC. Sengrid and Robin calling from sunny Cornwall. Some of you will remember that we worshipped with you quite some years ago and we were richly blessed. I just want you to know that we are thinking of you as you celebrate the church's anniversary today. And don't forget, keep safe and stay at home. I just want to take this quick opportunity to thank Rob for offering me the chance to say a big happy church anniversary to all of you that are involved in KMC. What a beautiful church you are. I'm absolutely loving Vicar School. I miss you all. I think about you all every day and I pray for you all every day too. Please, please, please don't forget at this time when things can be a little bit wobbly, God loves you. He sees you, he desires you and he intimately cares about you. Bless you all. On this church anniversary day, our reading is John chapter 14, verses 1 to 14. Do not be worried and upset, Jesus told them. Believe in God and believe also in me. There are many rooms in my father's house and I am going to prepare a place for you. I would not tell you this if it were not so. And after I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to myself, so that you will be where I am. You know the way that leads to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way to get there? Jesus answered him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one goes to the Father except by me. Now that you have known me, he said to them, you will know my Father also. And from now on, you do know him and you have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father. That is all we need. Jesus answered, for a long time I have been with you all. Yet you do not know me, Philip. Who, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Why then do you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe, Philip, that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I have spoken to you, Jesus said to his disciples, do not come from me. The Father who remains in me does his own work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. If not, believe because of the things I do. I am telling you the truth. Whoever believes in me will do what I do. Yes, he will do even greater things because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask for in, for in my name so that the Father's glory will be shown through the Son. If you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen.
everyone. It's good to be with you at this year church anniversary, 155 years. It's also a first for me where I am in two co with two congregations at the same time. Thanks Rob for inviting me to share in this service, for I realise that it's a period of transition as you prepare as a church for the ministerial baton change between Rob and Alan. You have been truly blessed by Rob and Carol's ministry and I'm sure that you will continue to be blessed many, many times over in the future. Today we are ministering in a time of unprecedented crisis. We are in a community, a nation, a world that is gripped by fear of coronavirus. But it's an opportunity for us, the people of God, to minister God's grace hope and love and lead people to the Father. It's a time of comfort, as Jesus says at the beginning of John 14, do not be anxious, believe in God, believe also in me. It's a time of challenge when, like Thomas, we say, Lord, we don't know where you're going, how can we know the way? And we hear those words, I am the way. God knows the way forward and he'll lead us through it. But it's a time of good news when we can offer people the message of salvation, the message of life in all of its fullness. It's a time of sharing our faith. The I am sayings of Jesus are revelatory. They find their origin in Exodus chapter 3 when Moses was surprised by God as God spoke out of the burning bush. Moses asked, who are you? I am who I am, said God. Moses was worried about his credentials for mission to the Hebrews. And God replied, I am the God of your forefathers. I am has sent me to you. Moses was setting out on his mission, not on his mission, but on God's mission. And in saying Jesus is the I am, he is saying something about his nature and, of course, about his ministry. Jesus is the way. He provides the roadmap to eternity. He came incarnate, the word made flesh who dwelt amongst us. He taught, he healed, he delivered, he forgave, he welcomed, he washed feet, he went to the cross, he suffered and died. And on the third day, the one who had laid down his life for his people received it back again to prove that sin and death were conquered once and for all. Jesus is the way to the Father. Through him, we have eternal relationship with God. Jesus is also truth, the word made flesh, the one who said, I only say what I hear the Father saying. The one who my professor of John's Gospel, Professor Barnabas Linders, said is the only rabbi known to have ever used the phrase, truly, truly, I say to you. And when we read those words, we read the authentic words of Jesus. I am the truth. What is truth? Pilate asked. Jesus had said in this passage, I am. Jesus is life. Christian Aid's slogan is, I believe in life before death, and so does Jesus. Do we sell Jesus short by the way that we live? By the way that we don't show his love in our actions, his joy in our faces? I wonder. But he said, I've come that you may have life in all of its fullness, not just on death, with God for eternity, but here and now. And that's good news in the time of coronavirus. So if we are the body of Christ, what is our mission during this time of coronavirus and what will be our mission post lockdown? Well, first of all, we are the church without walls. We have gone online. 
And The Guardian Online reported last Sunday a quarter of adults in the United Kingdom have watched or listened to religious services since the coronavirus lockdown began. And one in 20 have started praying during the crisis. People are turning to faith for succour amid uncertainty and despair. And so people like me have had to get used to all of these online technologies to preach into an iPhone, uh, to have a chat with people via Zoom and all the rest of it. But have you noticed that the Easter passages have been so relevant? Jesus, the risen Christ, came into the disciples in lockdown and breathed peace. He turned their lives upside down as they faced a new reality. They began to speak to people about faith, to those who had faith or were of another faith. And they faced persecution because Jesus had changed them forever. Jesus brings life. We may not know the fruit of what we've done for a long, long time, but the seed has been sown and some will bear fruit. We've got a ministry of love. I am ministering in a coronavirus hotspot. One Sunday, two of our mums who attend Messy Church died, both leaving three young children. We've not been able to get to the children or to the dads in the way that we would want to. How are we going to minister to them and others like them when we come out of coronavirus? With love. We'll have services of thanksgiving. We'll have times when we have pastoral conversations that go to the heart of grief and how to grieve. Yes, we have done, like you, the food parcels, ministering to the refugees in our midst, ministering to the depressed, having special coffee and chats so that people in lockdown can see a familiar voice, a familiar face. But we offer life. We minister amongst those who are coming to faith or have been in faith for a long time, but still we need to be changed. But one young man, he was a transformed drug addict and he was part of a congregation. And when he went back amongst his friends on the streets, they said to him, what are you on? And he said, I'm on God. They didn't laugh at him. They'd seen the change and they wanted to know more. And he became a street evangelist in St. Helens. You see, God transforms life. And let's never forget that that is the gospel that we uh, actually proclaim. That God transforms us as he lives in us and through us and begins to minister through the church. 155 years on, you are the church. The people of God for such a time as this. You are a church in transition like the rest of us, but you have God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit with you and the Holy Spirit will prompt you, leading you to unknown and new ministries. Don't be anxious. Hold on to the faith of the, the disciples, the faith of the missioners to these islands, the faith of the reformers and the evangelists, the faith of our relatives and friends, some who have gone before us. Hold on to your faith. Because God says to us, as he said to Moses, I am the God of all who have gone before. I am sending you out to lead people to me. So Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life, and he still is. Will we lead people to the Father? I pray you will take up the challenge as we in Liverpool seek to do the same. God bless. You are always in my memories and often in my prayers. On this VE Day weekend, we use a prayer, a tribute to the millions. Today we remember in prayer those who so selflessly gave their lives at home and abroad 
whose sacrifice enables us to enjoy the peace and freedom we have today. We remember those who came home wounded, physically and mentally, and the friends and family who cared for them. We pray for those who return to restore their relationships and rebuild their working lives after years of dreadful conflict and turmoil. We remember the families that lost husbands, sons and sweethearts. We remember the servicemen, merchant seamen, miners, brave civilians and others from Commonwealth and Allied countries who fought, suffered and died during several years of war. We remember those in reserved occupation and the brave people who kept us safe on the home front, the doctors and nurses who cared for the wounded, the women and men who toiled in the fields, those who worked in the factories, who all played such a vital role in the war effort at home. And today we've been asked to pray for all those in the NHS connected with our church. We pray particularly for Kath Applewhite, Louise Maud, Elizabeth and Sarah Waters, Gail Crawford, Debbie Acton, Victoria Applethwaite, Helen White, Tim Cotton, Olu and Sade Smith, Paula and Tom Lamb, Rachel Hills, Anna Dinsmore, Philippe and Jill Stratford. We pray for funeral directors such as David Hill, Barry, Anne and Damien Dodson and all who work at John Whiston's. We pray for all key workers and particularly at this time we pray for those who are bereaved, for the families of Dorothy Worsley and Malcolm Vant and all their friends. Today we also give thanks for the life the work and ministry of your church. We thank you for all the pastoral care that has been given to many people throughout this time. And as we give thanks for the past, we trust you for all that is to come as we pray in the precious name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen.